Hey, you over there. Yeah, I see you. You're thinking about starting your own podcast, aren't you? Well, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain because I have some experience here. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Yeah, that's right. You heard me. Totally free to record edit, and distribute your podcast. It doesn't get any better than that. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Good evening, everyone. This is Ayana back for, I suppose this is my official episode one of the podcast Ayana explains it all. And this episode is titled The One Where Ayana Explains Why Muslims Do Not Celebrate Valentine's Day. Now, now, this is not going to be about bashing anyone's religion or cultural practices, nothing of the sort. I'm just here to explain to you what I do more generically what my people tend to do and reflect on love and relationships, including my own relationships and the people I have loved in my lifetime and um, just offer some advice to the lovelorn, including myself, by the way. I'm really talking to myself, but okay. (laughs) Hopefully, in doing this, excuse me, I just had to take out my retainer. Hopefully, in doing this, people um, come to understand better how to love, how to be good lovers, how to respect themselves and their partners, and how to navigate relationships romantic relationships specifically, or, you know, you have friends who you love, navigate those friendships, doing it with love. There's always a song in my head every day when I uh, wake up. And usually it's something that I can sing. I'm always walking around my house singing. I'll sit while I'm working and I'm singing. My kids, my daughter asked me one time, she said, Mommy, why are you always singing? And I said, it's because I'm happy. And so there's always a song in my head and it just brings me a little bit of joy to like hum the tune or sing it. And today the song is Breezin' by the wonderful jazz and R&B artist, George Benson. My mother introduced me to George Benson when I was a kid. Like she had the record player, the eight track, the cassettes, all of these devices. And she would play jazz, R&B, funk, disco. In fact, just a couple months ago, she had me donate all of her old records to the Goodwill. I, I could have kept them and I could have gone through them and listened to them, but... You know, I'm I'm new school, but I'm old school and mostly they're dusty and I'm allergic to dust. <laughs> so, <laughs> But that Breezin song, oh, it's amazing. It's so relaxing and it puts you in the mood to talk about certain things. And that put me in the mood to talk about love. But first, I wanted to do some housekeeping before we get into that. My introductory podcast has been so well received that I am very excited to announce that I will be doing weekly shows. They might be a little rough at first because this is not my forte. I'm learning this. I'm teaching myself this. I'm watching 
YouTube videos and I'm reading online blogs about how to do this. And I'm reading, um, you know, presentations that people have posted online about this. And I'm listening to different podcasts. And now I'm taking advice from my friends who have done podcasts and um, your criticisms, your constructive. They have all been constructive and wonderful for the most part. There were some negative reactions to it, but that's to be expected. And I am not daunted whatsoever. If you don't know me, I am a person of fortitude. I've been knocked down many times, including by people I love and by people I've been in love with. But I am a very strong person and I refuse to let anything stop me from doing what I want to do. And a lot of the times what I have wanted to do was to fall in love and be in love. And so let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So one of the interesting uh, remarks that I received from a friend about my podcast is that my voice, I sound like Bobby Rush. And if you're from the Cleveland area, Northeast Ohio, Akron, Canton, you know who Bobby Rush is if you grew up in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Bobby Rush had a radio show on 93FM WZAK called For Lovers Only, For Lovers Only. And that song would play at the beginning of the show. And you just knew there was some good music about to come over the radio airwaves and you would hear him say tonight what do you want to hear call me and make a request and people would call up and they would go I want to dedicate um always and forever to my man Poochie and to Sierra and her man and to Glenda and her man and to Monica and her man and let them know that he is mine forever and the song would play (laughs) and it would be like that for like I think it was a three hour long program but his voice was so deep and delicious and wonderful I have the same kind of voice I don't have the you know my voice is not um high high pitched although I it can get there if I, you want me to take it there I can but I don't I don't I have always sounded like this this is my voice some people have said you should sound like um you know you should use your east cleveland voice the voice that I have to use when my head is moving like a black girl's head moves when she's got to tell somebody something and you could probably hear that in my voice my head moving and some people said no it's fine the way you talk is fine the way you sound is fine the voice that I'm using now is my professional voice my professional lawyer on the phone voice I probably will switch back and forth honestly I'm multi-dimensional I don't try to sound like anything but at the same time I want people to understand what I'm saying so it's easier for people to understand me if I speak like this right if I talk like how I really talk like when I'm at home and I'm just sitting around watching tv with my kids like this like I just sound so blah I don't like that I don't like that but I, I probably will switch from one to the next. You know, that's just how it goes, how it happens. It's, it's how it goes at work, too. I'll switch from, good afternoon, Ayana Fakir, how may I help you? To, oh, these people get on my freaking fraggle nagging nerves. But, so, there's that. So, going back to... Now that the housekeeping matters are concluded, I figure I have to come up at some point, have to come up with a script so that I'm transitioning from one segment to the next. But like I said, these episodes are going to be rough for uh, a few, a few episodes until I get the hang of what to do here. And I come up with a formula to get through each episode. So please 
bear with me. And I know you all will because you love me. Love. Yes. Let's get into it. Bobby Rush and For Lovers Only and the record player, the albums, all the songs about love that I heard when I was a kid, all of those wonderful, beautiful um, orations and lyrics and made you want to be in love and feel love and go grab somebody and just, you know, do all the things that comes with that. For Muslims, it's and so it's the same, but it's different because we are not like outwardly affectionate people, although it's perfectly fine to be outwardly affectionate, but we're also not, you know, typically, and I'm not here to judge anyone, but, you know, hugging and kissing and all of that outside of marriage is not allowed for lack of a better word. I can't think of the word at this particular moment, but it's not allowed. But people do what they want. People do what they want. And you are responsible for your own soul. I can't tell you what to do. I can tell you what I've done. And I can, you know, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm just the cleanest, most perfect person on earth who has not made any mistakes, who has not done something that people would look at, look at and go, oof, girl, please, you're going to hell, okay? You're going to hell. Pull up a seat. Don't pass go. Don't collect $200. I mean, but I don't judge people like that. I don't judge people like that. I am a firm believer in you do what is best for you. You do what is healthiest and safest. You do what you are able to do, but also you don't do anything that would hurt you or anyone else. But these things happen anyway, right? So when I was growing up, people didn't really talk about love because it was marriage. You got married And that was it. You got married, you had babies, that was it. You found a suitable mate, got married, that was it. But, so there was no talk about love. There was no talk about sexual intercourse because there was no reason to talk about sexual intercourse because you weren't having sex until you got married. Islam is a a conservative religion, obviously, but it's still very liberal and what people are allowed, I keep saying the word allowed, but what people practice, what people do, the cultural practices that are weaved into Islam. And one cultural practice that has never made it (laughs) into Islam and that never will is Valentine's Day. But before I get to that, one of the, the points that I wanted to make is that We are all humans. We are all sinners. We are all from the same material. None of us can sit and say, I'm better than this person or better than that person. And here's why. Because you don't know what God has forgiven that person for. You don't know what God has accepted from them or from you. And so... You just live your life and God gives us free will. You know, there are all these rules in the religious texts, but God, at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day, at the beginning of our lives, we have free will. So (laughs) on the 14th and the 13th of this month, I saw a couple of posts from Muslims about, oh, I see you guys celebrating Valentine's Day. I better not see you guys posting about Valentine's Day. But then I also saw Muslims posting about Valentine's Day and the things, you know, the time that they spent with their loved one and the fun that they had. And as I said before, for me, I I could go either way. It does not. I'm not hard and fast. There's gray areas to every section of life. There is no um, strictly left, strictly right, because those things lead to craziness and oppression So you're just somewhere in the middle and you're trying to always, you're always trying to figure it out. You're always trying to make sense of what your responsibilities are and what your duties are. 
you know, you have your duties to your Lord and you have your duties to the people around you. But at the same time, you don't owe anybody anything. But at the same time, you do. But you don't owe, what you don't owe is any explanation to anyone for why you do what you do and the life that you lead and the things you've gone through and the places you've gone and the thing. I mean, there's just no, there's no reason for you to feel like, to feel restricted because you don't want to be judged for dating out, dating outside of marriage or, you know, getting involved with someone outside of marriage or not getting married at all, right? Marriage is not for everybody. Believe me, they might tell you to get married, but marriage may not be for you. But anyway, I'm going off on tangents. Valentine's Day. So yesterday, oh, not even yesterday. Today is the 16th of February. So on the 14th, it's Valentine's Day. And I tend to get um, humorous on Valentine's Day because I don't want to be the buzzkill for people who are enjoying it and having a good time and celebrating. I think it's wonderful seeing the expressions of love and intimacy, you know, hugging and kissing and uh, spending time together, going out for dinner and all this, seeing all of that with people um, that I know. I love it. I love to see that. I love to see people in love. Love is amazing. Love is wonderful. Love is just, I mean, but expressions of love. Imagine you have this one day where the expression of love has to be the best and the biggest it's ever been. That's a lot of pressure. That is a lot of pressure. Which is why sometimes people are down on Valentine's Day because, oh, well, Valentine's Day should be every day. Like Mother's Day should be every day. Father's Day should be every day, you know. I shouldn't have to save my attention and affection just for this one day so that you can have a good time just one day. And usually for some people, it is a cop out because they don't want to participate. If you don't want to participate, go ahead and say that. But on the other hand, there's nothing wrong if you want to partake in some candy or buying someone a card or... um you know, going to the Walgreens the next day and clearing out the shelves of the 50% off, 75% off candy. If you want to do that, make sure it doesn't have gelatin in it. If you're Muslim, even if you're not Muslim, you know, those conversation hearts have gelatin and it's not beef gelatin either. It's little porky piggy gelatin, but I digress. So, Back to the um, the celebration of Valentine's Day. In Islam, there is no Valentine's Day. Islam is very much the religion of these special days that you have. For Muslims, it's every day. You're honoring your spouse every day. You're honoring your parents every day. You're honoring your children every day. You're not celebrating your birthday, but people do. Again, another thing. Because every day is a reason to say, Alhamdulillah, thank you for life. Not just on the day where you reach another year, where you turn that milestone over and it underneath it is it's 40, where it used to say 39. <laughs> every day is a holiday. Fridays are the best day of the week for Muslims. But we also have Ramadan, which is the month of fasting, which is our biggest quote unquote holiday and then there are the festivals of Eid and that's it that's what we have and the celebration of the Islamic New Year there is no other thing that you know is a hallmark for Muslims however in Islam we're we're not told to discard our cultural practices like whatever things that are American that you want to celebrate like the 4th of July or, you know, Juneteenth, or, and don't get upset, Thanksgiving. People feel how they want to feel about these things, and they'll go back and forth about whether you should do it and whether you shouldn't do it. And if it's 
halal, which is permissible, or haram, which means that it's not permissible. And as I said in the beginning of this, at the end of the day, that is between you and your Lord. I think some of these traditions are silly. And so I stay away from them. I don't embrace them. Other ones I love, I embrace them. It's all about you and what you want to do. Valentine's is not one of those traditions that I embrace. Although I'm not someone who's going to get on a horn about well, what's the meaning behind candy and flowers and why would you only give someone a gift on this particular day? Because for some people, these things are really special. Some people get married on this day. Some people get engaged on this day. And it means a lot to them to when they wake up on February, February, my gosh, and I don't even have my retainer in February 14th. And there's a box with a red ribbon on it and it has their name on it and they open it up and it's something they've always wanted or something that surprises them and it makes them feel good. And so when you go off on your tangents about something being harmful and ugly and stupid and silly, it's like, wow, but I like it. I like it. So I'm going to continue to do it. But um, Valentine's Day just puts me in mind of the very first. Yes, I have received a Valentine in my lifetime. My very first Valentine was not when I was a kid. You know, when you're a kid in school, you have those Valentine's Day cards, those little cards with the candy, and you write the two to Ayana from Sam, and it's got like a little sucker, and it's some little cartoon character or something on it, and it's so cute. I was never allowed to do that. We did not participate in that. Never did it. When I was older in junior and senior high school, um, they would have the candy grams and the roses and you could have, you could, somebody you love could buy one for for you and you would get it delivered to you in class. And I always, and I knew, I knew that it was not going to happen, but I always just hope like, please, somebody, please take pity on this little black Muslim girl and buy me a rose buy me some candy, buy me some flowers, please show me that I'm special. What I, what never occurred to me because, you know, as a child, you have to be taught things. You have to be told things. You don't just kind of figure things out for the most part. But what some, no one ever told me was that I could buy myself flowers. I could buy myself candy. I could buy myself special things I didn't have to sit and wait for someone to do it for me. And yeah, it's sweet. It's really sweet. But Valentine's Day should be every day. And you should love yourself. And you should show yourself expressions of love. Show yourself kindness. And be good to the people around you. Not just wait for this special day. Or sit and wonder and wait why this special day is happening. But it's not going well for you. So I remember um, the very first Valentine I received was actually from a Muslim man that I was courting. I was, gosh, I believe I was 20. I was a junior in college. And let me tell you this story now. Now, I, uh, I was home from college for winter break. Now, this is a story about an expression of love and kindness. It was December. I was home from college winter break, and I was driving my parents' car to go and pick up. I believe I had to pick up my mother from work. I can't remember what I was doing, but the car had had issues And so it would stall and it stalled at a red light and then it just completely would not would not start again. And I was on Superior Avenue. If you're from Cleveland, you know, Superior. Um, It was across the street from uh, 
a barbecue place that is no longer in business. And I went into the barbecue place and I said, oh my gosh, my car is stalled. You can see it right outside. May I please use your phone to call somebody to come and get the car, come tow the car. And they said no. Now keep in mind that it was freezing outside and it was snowing. And I was, you know, young woman. I I don't know if maybe they thought that I was some kind of um, drug addict because of the area I was in. <laughs> but they said no. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, good Lord, what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. And so I walked, I was walking to, there was a grocery store across the street. And I said, I'm going to go over there and try to find somebody whose phone I can use. And there was a security guard in the parking lot in his car. And I said, oh, maybe he'll let me use his phone. I knocked on his window and I explained to him what was happening. And he said, oh, please, yes, you can use my phone here. I'm going to help you. And he pushed the car for me. He pushed the car into the the parking lot across the street. He let me use the phone to call my parents. And he gave me a ride home. Now, this is a man who was on the clock, on the job, supposed to be doing something else. And he wanted to make sure that I was safe. He wanted to make sure that I was okay. And at the end of it... (laughs) He asked me for my phone number and I didn't think that was strange because he was a nice guy. had just done something so completely wonderfully nice for me. I mean, I said, you know, I'm sure here's my phone number. You can call me sometime. He was Muslim and that's what we did, you know, give you my phone number. I'll call you or I'll call your parents or whatever, whatever. So I ended up um, talking to him, getting to know him. We started courting. Everything was going great. And it was Valentine's Day. And I was at school. I can't even remember if I was at school or if I was at home. I was, oh, I was at home. But he had sent me something when I was at school too. He had sent me a gift when I was at school, which I had never experienced that. I had never experienced a man buying me a gift and giving it to me and saying, here, this is for you (laughs) because I like you and I want you to have this. And so um, I was at home. I received a giant Valentine's Day card and I believe there was a flower or of some sort with it or a teddy bear or something. And I was like, oh my gosh, This is for me. Like, I'm looking around like, are you sure this is for me? This is mine. And it was for me. And he he wanted me to have something nice on Valentine's Day. He wanted me to see that he cared about me and that he liked me. And he was happy with the direction things were going. And that was the first time I had ever received a Valentine. Ever. And this man would go on to do lots of selfless, kind things for me. Although it didn't work out for us. It it did not work out. And that's for the best, you know, mashallah. But he was selfless and he was kind. And he had done things for me that no man had done for me before. And that was really what attracted me to him, which made me think that, you know, maybe this could happen. Maybe this would be it. And it didn't work out. And it was devastating for me, but he was my first Valentine. And like I said, I don't celebrate Valentine's Day, but I do remember the expressions of love that people gave to me in honor of a tradition that was theirs. And I'm okay with it. I'm not rude about what people celebrate. Although in the past, I probably was. I used to be a totally closed-minded, ugly-minded, knuckle-headed person. Until I got older and started to see that life is not black or white. It's, as I said before, shades of gray. And you find yourself somewhere in the middle. 
that's where you are navigating life in the middle, the middle path. In Islam, we take the middle path because the left and the right, it always leads to extremism, disbelief. So you're in the middle path. And when someone offers you an expression of love, when someone buys you a gift, it doesn't matter what day it's on. You accept it. You accept it. And I accepted his gifts and we had a lovely time together. And although it didn't work out, I still remember that because it was something so good and so wonderful that happened to me. And um, after that, I suppose my second Valentine was when I was married to my ex-husband, my last ex-husband. It was kind of like a forced Valentine. He gave me a card, but it had snowed so bad the day before that he, for some reason, thought it would be cute to put the card in my car that was buried in feet of snow. And so I had to go outside to the car to get the card. I guess he was trying to surprise me. Um, I was definitely surprised. Yeah. (laughs) But that was nice. That was sweet. That was nice, whatever. But there were other issues that happened in our marriage that that little expression of love was the absolute least and most that he had done. And for, you know, whatever came of it, when you give someone something, a gift, when you show them these expressions of love, but you also don't love them, you also don't love on them, you also are not kind to them, these big over-the-top productions where you're buying them hundreds of roses, where you're buying them a new car, where you're giving them something wrapped in a red bow on Valentine's Day, those expressions are meaningless. Expressions of love are meaningless if they don't come with love the rest of the calendar year. So when we say, oh, Valentine's Day should be every day, what we really should say is you showing me you love me should be every day. Little ways, big ways. You show me you love me by respecting me. You show me you love me by hearing me when I talk. You show me you love me by responding to my love language. Everyone has a love language. Sometimes it's expressions of affirmation. Sometimes it's gifts. Sometimes it's a back rub. Sometimes it's uh, here's, you know, the $40 to go get your hair did or your nails did or whatever. But responding to my love language, that's love. When I come home from work and I've had a hard day and I just want to sit in quiet and you let me sit in quiet, that's love. And these are the things that we're doing for people every day, not just on February, February 14th of every year. You notice when Valentine's Day leaves the calendar, Suddenly, all of the things that came with it evaporate, just like that. The movies are off TV. The items are gone from the store. The commercials about what to buy, what to get, buy them this. They're gone, evaporated, like Thanos comes and it's all gone. Because most of what that holiday is now is commercial capitalism, Buy, 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 give, 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 give. And it has become so wrapped up in that, that when it's over, it's over. And the pressure is off of you. And you don't have to think about this again until the next year. When the pressure is on you again to produce, to perform, to do a big stunt for a person and go and put it on the internet and go, look at what my, my, my baby, look at what my man gave me. Look at this, look at that, look at the. So in that sense, it becomes kind of meaningless because if this was something so great, 
the next day it would still be there. The next day people would still be talking about it and the next day and the next day and the next day. People would still be talking about love. People would still be talking about how happy they are to be in love, how happy they are to have someone who loves them, how happy they are to be on this adventure of love and being in a relationship. And oh, it's so wonderful. You're forced into this thing because of Valentine's Day. You're forced into this corner where you have to perform these acts. And then once the play is over, you get up, you go home, you pack it up, you pack up all the scenes, you pack up all of the you know, the, the construction paper, you, you pack up the costumes and you put it away until next year. So it's, it's meaningless, but it's not meaningless because as I said before, these days hold value for someone, but you also have to understand that it's just one day when you love someone When you care about someone, when you respect someone, that is every day. That's the every day job. And there's something about the heaviness of being a loving one, of being a loved one that many people cannot carry. And so for for, for them, Valentine's Day is it. That's what they do. That's their day. That's where they really shine. That's where they're on because the rest of the time they can't do anything else because it's, it hurts. It's painful. They don't have it in them. They don't make the time for it. So they do these stunts because they don't have the little, the things in them that makes you do the little things for the person. It's not a burden love. It is a responsibility, but it is not a burden. And if you feel burdened by it, you have to ask yourself why you feel that way. Maybe you're with the wrong person. Maybe you're not healthy enough to love a person. When you're in a relationship, when you're in love, there is a vulnerability You have to make yourself completely open and bare to the person you are with. And sometimes what's in there when you lay yourself open, you know, when you're cracked like one of those uh, Cadbury eggs or one of those uh, Ferrero Rocher uh, candy, orange, chocolate orange things, you crack it on the table. And then what opens is, I mean, shit inside, really. There's no chocolate, there's shit. And if that's what you are on the inside, of course you're going to suck at love. Of course you're going to not be able to do the little things every single day. You, You don't have anything to give. You know, when people say you can't pour from from an empty cup, you can, you can't pour from a cup that has things stuck to it. You know, the shit that you've been through, the things that you've been through, it's like you've taken that cup and you've put it in the dishwasher and the dishwasher did not get it clean. And so all of the stuff is stuck to it and it's hard and it's gross and you keep running it through. I know because my son does this (laughs) when he washes the dishes. If there's a dish that doesn't get clean, instead of just taking the sponge and wiping it off, cleaning it off, it'll just stick it back in the dishwasher. And the food is hardened on there. So it's not going to come off. Now you have to wash it with your hands and get the food off. And that's how it is when you are broken on the inside, when you have shit on the inside. You have to work to clean it up. Nobody's going to eat off that plate. Nobody's going to drink from that cup if it's dirty. Not that you're dirty, but you have some things that you need to work on so that you can be a good partner, so that you can be someone who respects the person you're with, so that you can be someone who people are drawn to, so that you can be someone who people 
feel good. They feel good to be with you. Not that you have to make other people, you know, live to make other people feel comfortable and feel uh, whatever. But when people are with you, they don't feel like they're not being heard, like their needs aren't being met, like you're not listening, like you're not um, giving to them what they give to you. So at the end of the day, in Islam, there are all these rules about um, how men should treat their spouses and how women should treat their spouses and how parents are to their children and children are to their parents. And it creates for some this fantasy of how we are to be treated. And we come into relationships with all of these expectations. I mean, you're supposed to treat me like this and I'm supposed to treat you like this. And here in our marriage contract, it says you're supposed to do this and I'm supposed to do this. And those expectations, as I said, they're responsibilities. They are for some burdens and they cannot do it. They can't fulfill them. They can't do it. And so what I urge people to do is to talk about what your expectations are when you get into relationships. Talk about the things that you're going to celebrate. Are we going to do Valentine's Day or are we going to do what's your love language? Let's talk about that. How do you like to be loved on? How do you like to be treated? Yes, you can say that. You can ask them flat out. You don't have to wait. You can express yourself and say what your needs are, what your expectations are. Sometimes having expectations leads to disappointments, but also you want a person to know, hey, this is where I'm coming from and this is what I want out of this. And sometimes you'll be on the same page and sometimes you won't. But you have to get on the same page. You have to understand each other. You have to be able to give the other person what they need from you. As long as it's reasonable. Some people need things from you that, I mean, are beyond are beyond you. Again, because they were promised something when they were kids. They were promised the fairy tale. They were promised the women were promised the Prince Charming or in our case, the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We were promised men who were like that. And the men were promised women who were like his wife, Khadija. All you have to be and all you have to do You only have to be yourself. You only have to do what you can do. But most of all, above all, above all of that, you cannot love someone if you do not love yourself. So before you can ever get to a candy gram on Valentine's Day or a a car with a big red ribbon in the driveway, You need to figure out what it is about you that's lovable, that's loving, that's worth people loving you. And that's, do you love yourself? Do you love yourself? Not, oh, I think I'm hot shit. Yeah. Oh, no, no, not that. Do you actually care for yourself? Are you comfortable with yourself? Are you able to just sit and be alone by yourself? Entertain yourself. Make yourself happy. Once you figure that out, you're able to share this with someone else. You're able to be vulnerable because there is nothing in you that you're scared of people knowing. Because you've cleaned up yourself. You've cleaned up everything. You've made yourself good for you and for another person. And so Valentine's Day, hey, it's just another day for the two of you because every day y'all are vibing, you know, doing stuff, showing each other I love you. I 
you're talking to each other like you just met. It is amazing and it's wonderful. Love is wonderful. Love is wonderful. Love of self is absolutely amazing. And you cannot, you cannot properly love someone without first properly loving yourself. So next Valentine's Day, be your own Valentine. Or maybe before you even get there, leave little expressions of love to yourself. Say positive things to yourself. Affirmations. Oh, hey, girl. Mm-hmm. You are looking quite tasty today. Looking in the mirror, you passed your stuff in the mirror. Like, oh, oh who is that? Is that me? Of course it is. Look at me. I look good. I feel good. I smell good. I'm hungry. I'm going to feed myself. Oh, what am I going to feed myself? I'm going to make myself pancakes and sausage for breakfast. You are the first person that you love. It's not your parents. It's you, yourself. You learn to love other people, but the first person that you learn to love, that you should learn to love, is yourself. And with that, I will say goodnight. And I hope that I have been able to enlighten your evening, day, whenever you're listening to this, however you're listening to this. I forgot to mention that my sister said that I sound like Ron O'Neill. If you know who Ron O'Neill is, Superfly. He was also Whitley's dad on A Different World. But when I get into a rhythm, my voice just goes very low like this. Which is great when you're talking about love. So I'm glad that I could... um, be here to do that for you and that you all are receiving this message from me without prejudice, without any judgment, just an explanation and trying to reach an understanding and trying to make the world make more sense. I know I tend to ramble and I go off on tangents and I'm inshallah going to do a better job of coming up with a script and trying to, um, make my ideas more on a a straight line versus a jagged, you know, rock climbing mountain and you're falling down and you're hitting every corner. And so I hope you all have a good day and a good night. And I hope that you love yourself and you love the person you are with, especially if they love you too. Take care. Good night.